Good morning, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to Z Rush Live, guys. It's been a while, and I'm excited to be back. <laughs> had a bit of a month where I uh, just kind of took off, had some fun, you know, relaxed before starting a new job, and now I'm here. So lucky me. Um, yeah, I wanted to get started off with something kind of special. Uh, so last month I found out I was accepted to have a booth at Lightbox. Here, let's, let's get up close and personal here. Let's, uh, let's, let's chat up close and personal. Um, I was selected to have a booth at Lightbox Expo in October. So that's exciting. Uh, so what I'll be doing over the next you know few months is getting things ready that I can sell at my booth. Um, obviously, I have things like my 3D modeling course, uh, which you know some of you may be familiar with and may have already purchased and, and enjoyed. Uh, so far and I'll have more resources hopefully available by that time um, but another thing that I am trying to prepare and have ready let's, uh, let's get this uh, ready before I actually go through and do the reveal so if you're if you're familiar at all with uh, let me see let's get this up to with my fishbot okay uh, fishbot has been quite a, a popular model of mine since I since I sculpted him back in 20 what year was that 2016 2017 um, he's, he's nearly six years old okay he's, he's a pretty old old boy right here but one of the things that's super cool to me is uh, I wanted to be able to make this something that I could reproduce easily as a toy uh, to be able to sell. And I really, really like vinyl toys. I think that vinyl toys are super, super neat. So what I did, in fact, let me take this guy down here and I will just kind of screen grab him, bring him back up here and make him biggie sized. All right, is I made him a little chibi toy. <laughs> uh, doesn't seem to want to be sharing the screen very, <laughs> very much. I went and designed him to be a little chibi toy instead of just being a big bad robot. Um, super, super fun, and I can't wait to make this work. Um, oh my goodness it's just it's just been fun watching this come to fruition like this uh, the idea is to go through print them, clean them up mold and cast them and just love them you know just love them um, today what I want to do is I still need to create fins oh it looks like his little uh, his little back ports got turned off wherever they went to yeah I'm not sure where they went to oh um, there it's I'll have to make a new one I guess um cool but yeah I Right now I only have one boolean piece kind of in place and it's this piece to kind of cut out at the main body so that we can see and like you know make this part right right behind the right behind the the, the gills port a little bit more uh, visible a little bit deeper a little bit more intense of detail but really that's about it um, he's meant to be pretty small um, 
just to show you another prototype of another toy that I'm kind of working on for this. So let's go ahead. No, not display two. Let's go to webcam view. We got this guy uh, that I'm trying to go through and that I'll be continuing to clean up and that I'll mold and cast for sale at Lightbox Expo. Um, I'm only going to have a limited run of these guys and a limited run of, you know, little chibi fish bot dude over here too. Um, but it should be about that size, you know, about three inches, three inches long, something like that. Um, so yeah, very limited run. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to get them, I'll probably have like a, like a pre-order, uh, available, um, but only available for pickup at Lightbox. I won't be shipping them out anywhere just as a heads up. <laughs> super fun i'm super excited about it guys like like super excited <laughs> so yeah let's get to, let's get going on finishing this guy out um yeah the big thing is i need to get those those tail ports there i'm going to grab let's go back into chibi go into the first version because I'm pretty sure I have some I just don't know where they would have gone to let me see if I can find them LEDs yeah, I don't see them well it's like this is the original one so maybe it's just, it's just a matter of me going in and making new ones by the way, can anybody hear me? Can everybody hear me just fine? Um, I had some odd um, audio issues this uh, this past week with uh, with some meetings. So I just wanted to check and see if let's go ahead and hit append, and we'll just bring that in. Um, I just wanted to check and see if everybody could hear me just fine and all that jazz. Okay, some of these things I need to just go ahead and get rid of. <laughs> I knew I had them there somewhere. There we are. Those are the ones that I had made for this fish bot. And I was like, I knew that they were there somewhere. It's like, good golly. <laughs> oh, good. Sound is good. Awesome. Yeah, I found out that there's a setting buried deep within my audio settings that uh, that allows me to set kind of like a kind of like a master control for the microphone, and I had no idea it, it, it existed i thought i had checked everything and finally i found it and boom there we go you know <laughs> all right all right all right okay so a few things that i'ma want to check Okay. I'm just trying to look at this now from this side and try to figure out. In fact, let me let me go ahead and take a screen grab and just kind of place them down here. Um, you'll notice that it's not exactly like my sketch up above. It's pretty close, but it's not exactly like it. I'm trying to go through and refine things as I go, uh, change things about the design. I might go through and make this little... Uh, ventilation port bigger might keep it the same size as it is right now um, I do want to make this little detail back here bigger though this is kind of like the fun part you know is art directing yourself and figuring it out you know <laughs> um, it looks like the fin back here is a little bit man screenshot just does not want to be working today here, we'll just keep it over here for now, and we'll just kind of play around with this. 
Um, there is this little section right here. And I'm going to take this boom like this. And we're going to raise it up a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see it enough for it to be, you know, for you to follow along. I'm going to make it something kind of like that. This feels like this is coming in maybe a little too tight. So it's kind of pull it out. It's like there's just maybe I just need to change that focal shift down some. Cause there's like this it's like it's really, really tight in this spot down here where it's where it's kind of where it has that little inset there. But just a little bit of tweak in here can kind of fix the flow so that it feels a little smoother. And then obviously we got to go through and make sure that this isn't coming out because, uh, you know, it's just not how it's supposed to be, right? It's just not how it's supposed to be. Mm. I should have plugged today's stream on, on uh, Instagram. Here's what it'll, here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and we will. Yeah, I don't know that I like that. Hmm. Maybe it's just a matter of taking this. And... Yeah, it's kind of tricky kind of playing around with these sorts of things and balancing things out here while I'm while I'm figuring that out I'm gonna come down here ooh let's do this let's do this okay let's say Z plug in we're gonna go T pose mesh oh I wonder if it'll keep the boolean on, or if it'll uh, like like what's what's going to happen when it's in here. Yeah, okay, that's what I that's what I figured. The piece is going to be visible, but it's not going to be affecting the mesh. That's good. <laughs> I figured, but you know, kind of interesting to know. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna take this. Oh, in fact, let's let's isolate the blue. Let's do something kind of like this. Let's do something kind of like this. We'll kind of grow it out. And then we'll grab this section alone and just kind of grow it out like that. Just kind of fix some flow through here. You know what? Let's grab uh, let's grab these points here and bring them down to match that flow. Yeah, let's do this. Just kind of fix this piece. Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to turn on my symmetry. Let me see how bad is it. I 
Okay, so it should be good from right here. So let's just turn on symmetry and then we'll uh, turn on this part and open that. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> I hate it when that happens too. <laughs> oh my good gravy. That part doesn't matter as much because it's not visible, but we've got that. So we're going to make sure, we want to try to make sure that this flow is pretty smooth coming through here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to invert the mask there so that way we get the. Uh... Yeah, it's working. Okay, let's go ahead and invert the mask on, just on that piece so that I can kind of uh, tweak this shape a little bit, kind of clean it up some. What the on ref? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> All right, so that's working. This is working. going to try to match make that flow feel a little cleaner okay that feels better AMC tune in to our next studio feature our in next industry spotlight stream featuring AMC and their creative studio work on June 14th at 9 a.m. PDT. This is referring to like the stuff that they show at the beginning of movies and things like that. center that and just boom it's coming out quite a bit further than I'd like it to so let's just push it in that's that's way too long kind of push and play with that tune in next time for another exciting episode of industry spotlight has anybody watched any of the industry spotlight uh, streams I haven't gotten to in fact I'm trying to remember off the top of my head uh, who all they've had so far Oh, that's kind of funny. It's advertising a past stream. Uh, tune in for How It's Made in ZBrush stream featuring Ian Robinson. Ian's great. Real nice guy. Okay, let's go ahead. T post sub T. And then we'll watch the magic unfold. Hopefully I got the, the tail to feel right. If not, I mean, I can make further adjustments, and it's not bad. <laughs> Thanks, Adriano. <laughs> yeah, it's been a fun... A fun piece to work on. Um, I started working on it the other day. Um, 
since my personal computer was all taken care of and works and all of that, I don't have to worry about anything really. Uh, my work computer has been slowly getting pieces <laughs> over the last uh, couple of weeks. Or like, not couple of weeks, the last week, you know, just like last several days, I've been getting, you know, piece by piece in the mail. Um, and so I've had to wait for that in order to get started on actual work projects. Um, for those of you who, who may be new to my stream, um, I work for Marvel Animation. Just started up this past week, so that's why I'm waiting on computer stuff. Uh, in fact, I'm still waiting on a keyboard and mouse, so it's <laughs> kind of a crazy, uh, kind of crazy, just crazy. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's just crazy. Um, <laughs> but... That uh, feels better. Uh, yeah, I am a visual development sculptor um, working on an unannounced project. So, super, super excited. Should be a really, really good time. Okay, I want to pull you guys a little bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. Um, let's go up to the tails. So I have these different tail pieces that I have created, um, and I wanted to get your opinion because I did a f I did like three different ones. Um, I've got this one, which is pretty simple, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and shape wise, it still needs. Why isn't it showing up anymore? Huh. Preferences. This must be something new because I'm not familiar with this not showing up. Um. Draw? Has anybody run into this? Does anybody know anything about it? Why? Because like usually, if I have something selected, it'll show up. Um, and this has been this has been my my technique for you know viewing different. <laughs> different. Uh, versions of things for years. Let's kind of fix this shape just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do it this way then. Good grief. You know what, maybe it's the live boolean. Maybe that's what's throwing it off. Let me turn off that, uh, that little extra piece because it's good enough. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so far it looks like that's the problem. <clears throat> okay, so I have these three versions here. This very simplified version. So it looks like it's just a just an issue with the live boolean or something like that, which is buggy. That's that's weird. Um, that might be one that I have to write down so that I can bring it up. Um. All right. Bug during. Live Boolean not visible 
sub tool doesn't show when selected as it usually does. I always try to write these things down and, and uh, send in notes because, um, you know, when when users find uh, little bugs, um, it's just helpful. It's helpful for, for Pixelogic to know about it and uh, so they can be aware of it and help it. <laughs> help it not be a thing. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's not lining up. I need to fix that. That's that's gonna bug me, and that's not lining up perfectly either. Going along here or along here. There'll be some of those things that I'll have to go through and and do. Since I see it right now, I'm going to go in and try to fix it. Let's grab that infinite depth again. space there you know what I think I like the idea of actually adjusting let's kind of pull it away from from that piece just a little bit maybe pull it in a little bit too but not a whole lot Let's grab this, pull that up, pull that up, pull that up, pull that up. Okay. It's just a matter of like going back and forth. There's always going to be something to tweak. Like always, 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 always. Um, and, and you've got to kind of pick your battles, you know, figure out what's worth the time to fix. <laughs> it's all worth the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that this curve is about right got to make sure that it matches up with this piece down here and has the same kind of gap that the uh, top one does. There we go. That looks better. It just looks cleaner now. Okay, so back to the tails. Okay, so yeah, simple, simpler version which um, still needs some shape work to make it feel more like uh, more like the concept because I like some of the shape that's going into this. Um, so it's just a matter of kind of tweaking and pushing and pulling. Um, I'm trying to decide if I like the pillow feel. I think it might be a little bit excessive um, but I mean, I wanted it to feel kind of, you know, soft and friendly. Um, you know, kind of, kind of inflatable style, but not, not like a balloon, right? <laughs> alt move. Exactly. Yeah. I love alt move. <laughs> it's one of my favorite little, little, uh, little tricks. So yeah, I think something like that will work a little bit better. Let's go ahead and kind of push this in a little bit to alt move, alt move, alt move, get some ASMR, alt move, action. <laughs> okay, so yeah, simple tail versus one that's yeah more complex, 
Uh, I don't like this as much because it's got like the the evened out sections. It's like the you know this this section is as wide as this section, as wide as this section. It's pretty you know it's pretty evenly spaced, so it doesn't feel super nice. Um, I have this one that's more of the shape of the tail with that same sort of you know segmentation. Um, I'm thinking that if I were to do something like this, um, that I would want to change where these uh, where these lines are happening. In fact, let's let's try this because. Let's go ahead and do this, undo this, and then this oops, not on the top. Say control H to be able to hide the mask. And I'm just going to kind of adjust this so that it feels a little bit more in line with the rest of the model here. And let's go ahead and just alt smooth this. Alt move, so might alt smooth too. <laughs> and then just regular smooth. It's always kind of a combination of the two. Just gonna make that biggie sized, and then let's grab these. Boom, boom. You know what? Instead of doing this one, let's do the one next to it instead. Let's say this one. Let's just come over here we'll kind of shrink it in just because what this is going to do is this is going to vary up the section widths and it might make it more appealing but I've got to test it out before I can know for sure I'm gonna try something like that just to be able to see what that is like and I like that much better than the other one so let's We'll, we'll start to work on this as an option as opposed to uh, the other one that we'd had where the sections were more even. Okay, so this will be tail option. And I like that having instead of it being like a like you know fully round or something like that, we gotta fix the shape a little bit. But we have kind of like this you know room, room, and then like just like subtle little breaks in that in that um, in that curve. And I feel like that'll help a little bit. I think same thing down here. I want to kind of change it so that we have instead of having the the crease right here. Oops. Uh oh, I don't want to stitch any points. Let's say move. Uh, we'll turn off the snap to surface. Just kind of do a little relaxed smoothing. We use our move brush. We'll just kind of pull that out a little bit. Yeah, let's kind of smooth this down. This is regular smooth, right? Let's just kind of get that so that it's a little bit more even through there. Let's get this to be a little bit more consistent. something like that and then for this other section I think yeah we could just move it up one let's let's test it 
I'm going to I'm going to save it because saving is good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pooba. I actually had a, a kind of like your your username P W O B A kind of reminds me of a buddy of mine, Paul Ovuoba. <laughs> um I mean you know, Woba doesn't really fit with Ovuoba, but you know, it's, I don't know, whatever. It's kind of fun. It's fun. <laughs> so let's see. Let's let's now that we have that saved, I'm going to take that boom and boom shrink that in a little bit like that a little bit more something like that and then let's grab that move brush So I'm going to need to play with this placement too because that's you know the same thing. I just want to have like this gentle like boom, gentle break in that curve. I like that. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you like that uh, that little break in the tail there? This is a little bit odd. Um, let's kind of fix this some. I kind of like that. Sleep is for a week. Oh my gosh, I like it. <laughs> okay, now let me see. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I like this shape or not. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and kind of play with it some. In fact, let's let's leave this more about where it was maybe it's just a matter of making it look more cheery by uh, by kind of lifting the shape some something kind of like this I'm just gonna pull this up some Like it's definitely a very different shape than what we have in the concept. So here, here's, oh, here's what we can do. Let's grab this, we'll soften the mask, and then uh, let's go ahead and grab our transpose line, and I'll just hold Alt, and then, boom, you know, just kind of, just kind of move it, you know? Just kind of nudging it in the right direction. So now that's that's feeling better. I'm liking that. This uh, this bottom part though, it's not feeling quite right. So let's play with that some now. I'm actually curious. The uh, it feels like here we go. It's kind of very up where that where that hits yeah let's go ahead and turn on transparency so we can 
Get a little bit different of a control over that piece. Yeah, when you see everything under the hood, you know, <laughs> he's going to be doing bo uh, booleans later. <laughs> I struggle with hard surface modeling in ZBrush. This is very impressive to me. Thank you so much. It's so much fun. Those fish are really wonky in real life. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um... Yeah, I love, I love, um, right, let me show you kind of like what my topology is looking like. I like to use clean topology uh, just because it helps me to maintain. Um, it helps me to ma maintain clean, smooth surfaces, uh, especially so, especially since I, I want to be able to go through and 3D print this. I want to keep these surfaces as clean and workable as possible. And then when I want to do large changes or even small detail changes, it makes it a lot easier to change things because, because it's all clean. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the idea behind all of that. Um, just makes things really, really simple. Um, <laughs> it's criminally clean. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, got here a bit late. I want to watch it from the beginning later. This uh, so 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 far in this stream, it's not the stream isn't very uh, very advanced. It's not it's not very long. Um, I did most of the uh, model work before. Uh, if you if you're familiar with my regular fish bot. This is what the classic fish bot looks like. Um, in fact, let's see if I can get a good, let's turn on perspective so that I can get this in here. Oh, that's a, that's a, it's a bad spot. Let me check it verse, uh, on the, uh, stream instead. There we go. That'll be better. So you can see that that's the that's the difference of what these guys are are looking like. Okay. Kind of a kind of a fun thing. Um, some some slight differences. I mean, I did take like for instance the uh, the the port right here, this little charge port or whatever. Uh, I went ahead and took the one from my from my original fish bot. Let's go ahead and bring him back up. You can see there, there it is right there. Huge size difference, but also like <laughs> I just kind of hit and flayed on it just to give it a little bit more of like this puff, like this marshmallow puff sort of feel. Um, I'm still not 100% sure that I like it, but you know, it's there and it'll be there for now. Um, let me see. I want, by the end of this stream, I want to figure out what I'll do for the fins. I don't know that I'll get to finish, finish, but I want to, uh, but I want to finish out the fins and that might be it. Oh, shoot. There we go. Let's take this. We'll turn that tail on. I'm going to say tail 03 because that's the third tail version that we had. Um, Quentin, how you doing, dude? Sorry to ask, but do you know some good ZBrush core tutorials? Uh, I don't know about a whole lot that goes with ZBrush core. Um, it seems like, it seems like some of the streamers have done streams in the past dealing with, um, that's my little fish bot. Um, they've done streams in the past dealing with, uh, you know, showing workflows with, uh, what's it called with, with ZBrush core and ZBrush core, <coughs> sorry, ZBrush core mini. Um, 
trying to think who else used it. I think I think Ian has. I think Shane Olson has. Shane Olson is a great resource. Um, he streams, I think, every Monday morning still. So he's a great way to start your Monday. Um, what else? Yeah, those are those are the two that kind of come to mind. Saw your other fish robot. I thought for a moment you were doing all over again. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. I'm not starting all over. Uh, yes, this is a personal project. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, um, I was I was granted a booth for uh, Lightbox Expo this year. I'm super excited. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to come up with things that I can sell and and. Uh, make available at my booth and uh, this is one of those things that I have wanted to produce you know my fish bot like I want to I want to produce him as is you know his his in all of his glory right um, but I don't feel like I'll be able to do that within reason um, by the time lightbox comes around in October uh, but what I feel like I can do is kind of a, a simpler, simplified version uh, of the fish bot, uh, and I'm, I don't know, I'm still trying to think about his, uh, about what to call him, I'm thinking about calling him uh, son of the fish bot, or <laughs> fish bot 2.5, or something like that, <laughs> um, 2.5 could be kind of fun, I guess, <clears throat> but yeah. I've been kind of throwing around a few little names, and it's just kind of fun. Uh, so yeah, it is a personal project to be able to make a toy uh, for, uh, and to be able to to produce and sell uh, at the end of the year at Lightbox Expo. So, so it'll be fun. These uh, all all any of the uh, products that I that I'll be selling at Lightbox will be on a like a a pre-sale there will be a pre-sale option for pickup um, I won't be shipping anything out I've I've done shipping before and it's a hassle <laughs> um, so I think what I'll be doing is I'll be you know I'll be I'll be going through and I will be selling everything there um, if anything's left over though We'll have to see. Maybe I'll go ahead and uh, fish pot junior. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> trying to remember if that's one that I had thought of or not. But I like it. Fish pot junior or son of fish pot or you know things like that. It's just kind of funny. What do I have highlighted? Oh, it's still the tail. Okay. But yeah, and like I was like I was saying earlier, let me kind of zoom in and, and show you this uh, again. Uh, this is kind of the size that I want to go for. Um, I've been working on some some prototypes of my shark, of my baby shark, <laughs> and uh, and I and I've come come to this kind of. Let me show you this. Just sat on my shark okay so I had this and it's great it's fun but I actually went through and changed him so that he's got a little slightly different proportion um, the hope is to be able to sell these sorts of guys to um, <laughs> fish about 2.5 gives off steampunk vibes that's kind of funny um, but yeah, so this this little guy right here, baby shark. I'm hoping to be able to mold and cast these two. Um, yeah, got to test it out. Got to play around with it. Um, I think I still need to go through some sanding just to make it so that he's perfect and ready. Uh, but yeah, I love I love my little my little shark. 
Um, I love my little. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just going to be fun. It's going to be so much fun, guys. <laughs> so much fun. In fact, I might have to make stickers of uh, of this guy too, so that it's yeah, just so that he's you know fully ready, you know. Um, oh. I also have Hammerhead edition, so yeah, it's just gonna be kind of fun. Hammerhead, uh, regular Baby Shark, yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. They definitely have a long way to go before uh, before they're ready, though. So yeah, Baby Shark. Doo -doo. Every kid gets way too into that uh, <laughs> that song at some point. <laughs> yeah, Lightbox is going to be epic. I'm I'm so looking forward to it. In fact, um, I've been trying to think about. Ooh, I need to look at this. Uh, the spacing right here is a little bit off. Um. kind of make this kind of more subtle like we have with the tail back here that way it's more of a repetition of shapes technically if we are working Let me see. I've got to. I've got to think about this because this is this is something that I think is valuable to think about. Let's go Control Shift D. I'm going to keep that original one so that I can go back to it if I need to. But one of the things I want to do is like here my concept. I just have just the little dorsal fin, um, which would be just just that, right? Just this little guy right here. Uh, which gives me a lot more space to be able to space out this uh, this top dorsal fin here, which I feel like I do need to do. Um, is it going to be colored too? That's something I'm trying to think about doing. I might do like a ton of uh, unpainted casts of you know of the different uh, of the different toys. Um, and then maybe have like a small selection that are painted. Um, I would just need to come up with a with a good method of <laughs> painting before <laughs> you know create like reusable masks and things like that. But uh, yeah, um, painting is not my strong suit though. So it's it's a it's a really really tricky thing for me to want to. What's it called? Um, to want to comprometerme, commit myself to. Um, Put this about right there, I think. Put that about right there. I'm trying to fix some of these uh, inconsistencies with the shape. You can see, like right here, like where this uh, edge is coming down. It's it's not quite quite right. It's close. And this one right here, this needs to change flow just a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, you could use uh, you could use UVs. Um, the thing, so so to be able to make paint masks, I'm, I'm not going to be, like I'm I'm talking about like actual like physical painting. Um, you know, here's an example of something that I that I have painted. <coughs> Um, let's go back to the webcam view so you can see uh, this one's all hand painted <laughs> with
with acrylics. <laughs> She's a little bit dusty. Um, but, I mean, it's it's not the cleanest paint job, and a lot of it's kind of dry brushed on to be able to get different, uh, different fades. Um, it's fun, and it looks pretty fun. It looks pretty good, but there are a lot of things that I need to learn to be able to be really good at painting. There are some techniques to be able to do masking for painting figures um, where you can essentially make a mold for a specific part or a reusable mask. Let me see if I can find actually a good... Let me pull this up. It's not that's not quite what I'm yeah it's kind of a stencil um, I'm trying to think because there's a let me go over here to um, let me see because this isn't This would probably have things like that. Um, painting figures for production. You see if I can, <laughs> you see this guy like super hardcore right up and in there. Um, yeah, he's gonna lose his vision. Painting toys for production. Let me see if I can find something real quick. Just to show you kind of the example. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like she might have some of that sort of stuff going on. In there. Oh, there we go. This is actually exactly it. So you see, this is just this is just a part. This is just a thing that you place over the top of uh, your toy, and it blocks out your toy, and then you just spray, and it's done, right? So this is a really, really simple, uh, simple way of being able to paint your figure. So you can see this is masking out the uh, you know parts of the parts of the face or whatever and you're able to go in really quickly and be able to get your blacks in or you know however however they have it set up to work um, yeah so you can see there's that and this is how the toy actually ends up so you know you get really quick tight um, colors really really easily yeah these Sofubi uh, toys they're there's <laughs> they're super cool sometimes I like this guy <laughs> that's kind of fun um but yeah absolute blast and and it's and it's it's a it's a technique of things that i feel like is so insanely helpful um uh, it's just a matter of making just a matter of making it um and so it might be a matter of you know going through and vacuum forming and then cutting out pieces or um yeah, just different, different little things like that. But yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of mask I'm talking about. <clears throat> Is it masks out the toy while you paint it? Um, so glad that they had an example of that up there. That's that's really really neat. <laughs> um, yeah, some of these printer, good smile uses our nuts. Um, how it's made, but yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a really neat technique, and <laughs> it's one that I'm glad that I know about. It's not one I've ever used, and it's one that I totally want to use, for you know, obvious reasons. <laughs> it 
Let's take this and kind of move it in some. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab this. Let's kind of scoot these sides in. It just feels a little bit too wide. Let's see what happens if I are, uh, were to I think I'm curious if I get rid of this will it be okay <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's decidedly not okay something like that let's grab that make sure that I don't have anything visible that I don't want to have affected because I, what I want to do is I want to smooth this out in fact I might be able to just yeah there we go smooth that out some it's all just a matter of cleaning up now you know let's invert our visibility make sure everything else is masked just so that way I can make sure that I am cleaning up just this uh, this little area you know I just want to make sure that these points are more kind of toward the center of these oh that was a little bit too much um, toward the center of the area between, you know, between their anchor points, between the edges of the polygroups. That way I can make sure that, that there is less uh, distortion, less pinching. Let's grab this and we'll say slide edge loop partial. Great. Let's kind of take that up a little bit and take that up a little bit and take that. Oh no, don't do that. Slide that down a little bit. And let's say, let's get rid of a couple of these too. Just because we don't need we don't need all those. Um, in fact, let's take this section now, that front section, boom. And with my move tool, like the transpose line, I'm just going to grab this line and kind of shrink it up. Maybe a little bit further. that'll hopefully be a little bit better for this particular little guy and then I can take it let's grab our <coughs> sorry, sorry about that getting a little bit getting a little bit dry there arson art are these masks possible to be made with booleans? Yes. Um, yes, actually, you could. Um, and that's an idea. I'll have to see. 
Cause like you have, yeah, I think, I think there are, there are two, there are two ideas that I have for making those masks. Um, either you could vacuum form plastic over the top of your piece and then cut out the parts where you want the, uh, where you want the paint to go through. Um, or you could, you know, like you're suggesting using Booleans, you can go through and, you know, create create the piece and then kind of like extrude out from wherever it is you want to, to be able to uh, kind of mask off and then just delete the holes uh, and then give it thickness and then you're, and then you're good to go. Um, it's kind of a, um, uh, if uh, ZBrush will stop auto saving, we can center things. Uh, it's kind of an interesting It's an interesting method. Uh, the The tricky thing about it is that then you have to go through and do the three D printing, and then it, it costs more uh, on materials. So you know, I'm not sure. up and boom something something a little bit more like that that feels pretty cool it does feel like it might be a little bit too close to the edge though well maybe it's just a matter of taking it and moving it up but yeah so, so that's, 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 that's kind of my thoughts on, on that is that then it would cost more on, you know, printing the part. Um, so it's a great idea. I just think that that, that's kind of the thing that I think I would run into is just the cost of printing the mask, which, you know, in the end, <clears throat> you got to think about kind of where it is that you're trying to, to save. Uh, it's definitely saving time. Okay, if the, you know, so long as the, the printed mask works the way you need it to, um, it saves you a ton of time uh, because, you know, you can go through and you can mass paint these, these pieces really quickly, really easily. Um, I mean, I don't know how to do <laughs> vacuum forming. I've never done it. <laughs> so that's something that I'd have to have um kind of a game plan on before I before I try it out but you know, whatever I'll figure it out <clears throat> but yeah that's that's the whole reason why why I was thinking the vacuum forming solution cuz it's much much cheaper But I'll have to do some more research and see if I can figure out what it is that uh, that the mass mass production factories do, um, because you know everything that they do is aimed at cutting cost. That's that's literally what they what they're for. <laughs> um, sadly enough. people in these in their sanity you know you don't need no sanity <laughs> that feels a little bit too like laid back I'm gonna kind of bring this up a little bit and that feels a little bit cooler it's like ev everything that I'm doing with this it's all about kind of trying to figure out the redirection trying to re like fine-tune the design because in the end um, this is kind of more of like my guide, my prompt to get me in the right direction. Um, it will not end up looking like this. <clears throat> the goal is for it to, to look like my original fish bot, but then to have its own flavor. Hello. Rohan. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what RHN would be, but if it's maybe pronounced like, like run, I don't know. Kind of cool. Rohan. 
like in Lord of the Rings, Rohan. The Knights of Rohan. Welcome. Ah, oh, thank you, Andrew. Okay, let's see if we can figure out. Let's save this first before we lose it. <laughs> um, and now it's time to figure out the fins. <clears throat> now, my original intent with the fins is having these little wedge-looking shapes. That's going to be too brittle. It's going to be too brittle. So one of the things that I'm going to do I mean, okay, so here are a couple of things. I thought about having it so that I had just, you know, the fin and, and having it kind of tucked up against the body so that way I could just make a two-part pull mold uh, sort of thing. And then I got to figure out, you know, how to design the inside of the mouth so that it's, um, you know, so that it works. <laughs> um, But yeah, that's one of the that's one of the things that I'm trying to trying to consider is with these fins. Um, how how should I go about that? Let's let's start over here. I'm going to use my IMM Primitives brush. Just kind of pull it in like that. Let's say bend curve. Let's change the direction. Uh, let's change the resolution. I'll grab, oops. I can grab that other piece there. Shoot, why is it? Uh... That's really weird. Okay, I don't know why that was happening. That's that's really bizarre. Um, okay, so we have things like this. I can go ahead and scale this up. Squeeze it. Oh, I don't want to squeeze it in that direction though. Oh, if I move it closer, does it squeeze it the other direction? Oh, that's so cool. I didn't realize that that did that. Okay, that's great. That's great. Um, Except, okay, this is in no way what I want, but this is a way of being able to quickly visualize an idea of what I might, <laughs> what I might try. Look at how terrible that looks. <clears throat> Let's say split unmasked. Oops, I don't want that. Let's go ahead and use the move brush. Okay, so we could try something like, here, let me actually kind of smooth that out a little bit so that it has smoother lines. It's it's a ton of fun and it's 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 definitely a challenge to get something to feel right. But because uh, I mean, especially you know, considering the scale of you know, I try to I try to get it to a point where I can see it on my screen about the size that I intend to make it, and I try to judge <clears throat> different details or different part sizes or things like that. Uh, by how it looks at the scale that it that it is on the screen, and um, 
you know, I can tell everything's everything's reading, everything's popping, everything's everything's working. Um, something I'm still not completely sure about is the the seams between the different panels. Um, and then when I go in and add bolts <clears throat> to be able to to give it more of that mechanical sort of feel, um, I want to make sure that I place the bolts in ways that make it feel. You know, proper mechanical, right? Uh, but I also want to make sure that they're the right size and that they yeah, just, they feel right. <clears throat> you know what? Um, this particular fin. I think we could have it just. Something yeah, it's gonna move it down a little bit. But you know, I mean it looks simple. But I think like, you know, refining this shape. Joe Money Man Mena, how you doing, dude? <laughs> Gotri, how you doing? Dude, Joe. This just popped up. You two must know. Yeah, hey, dude. I love you too, man. It's been a long, long time. You're coming out to the summit this year, right? You coming out to, to the summit this year, Joe? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Quit Facebook. Facebook doesn't deserve you. <coughs> Dude, yeah, we'll totally, uh, if it's there, I'm there. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, there's, that, that's been, that's been something that's been totally lacking. Um, this whole pandemic is just, people <laughs> gotta get back to work dude thank you so much man hey nini joe says hi joe mena <laughs> miss you too brother take care sure if this has been covered but you've got a bunch of versions under the subtool heading <clears throat> under the subtool head are you talking about this right here the fish bot beta 22 that's just because i keep like breaking pieces off of off of each other i haven't uh <clears throat> i haven't uh uh gone through and created like a like a new piece or appended a piece or whatever um, so that's kind of what that's what that's coming from. So far as like the actual version of this file, um, I have this up here. So I've got this uh, Fishbot Chibi Two. Um, that was like my first little naming bit right there. Um, I think I might be able to delete these pieces. Uh, I'll, I'll have to decide whether or not to actually keep this one. But let's go ahead and bring that down um, and then for the bolts do I have the bolts I think I have the bolts somewhere I need to <clears throat> I need to verify that before I delete pieces
Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine. Uh, a mirror fell. Uh, yeah, the kids are fine. But yeah, I just like something's going on, and then all of a sudden, like loud noise. I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm not even going to take time to explain. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so now that that's over. <laughs> Yeah, those dad instincts. Like, oh, that is coming, dear. <laughs> Help is on the way. <laughs> Anybody name that movie? Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> yes. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... <clears throat> I'm going to take these little guys. Let's, let's get rid of the ones from the back because we don't need the ones in the back. Geometry, delete hidden. And then let's clean this up a little bit because that's that's pretty heavy. Look at how many edges that has. That's so much. So many unnecessary edges. All right. And just get rid of everything that is not needed. And that's not really needed. We'll leave. We'll leave that for right now. And then. So you want to do this real quick. Let's say polygroups. Uh, let's say group by normals. Interesting. Control W so we get that to be its own polygroup. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now we can go crease PG. Boom. Now we have this beautiful little shape right here. Now we just need to control the, the creases. So we get two and three. So now we can use this as like an insert to be able to kind of plus out the, um, <laughs> for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to properly use poly model. Poly modeling is awesome and it is definitely well worth um, the time diving into it. I have used it for so many different projects, personal and, and professional, that it's it's been a lifesaver. It's been tremendous. Uh, visibility sets are really neat too. Um, Cause like you can go through and make different folders and things like that. Um, the uh, but then you know beyond that, in fact, I haven't I haven't really like gotten into. Um, 
I haven't I haven't had to use my visibility sets really but it is a really nice thing so for instance if I wanted to be able to um, here let's let's get rid of this uh, yeah I'll just bring it in if I need it we'll say delete all okay so that way we just eliminated like a ton of different pieces that we didn't need okay so with this visibility set one maybe I don't need I don't need this turned on let me turn this off but then everything else should be it should be just fine but let's say in the next one maybe we want to let's turn everything on turn on the body okay and then we have like our different uh, our different tails so we need to turn off those two versions we need to turn off extra body parts here let me see We can grab this, we can say delete that. That's, we don't need that. Okay, let me see if I can find. that is needed um, this one however is not needed because we went ahead and we redid that this is trash oh yeah and then the port Oh, okay. Yeah, I just had to get a good feel for what it is that's... Okay, so let's go ahead and let, we'll put this in, in place, more or less, anyway. remember the fish vehicles from yeah uh, different certainly very different but yeah I, I loved Atlantis let's go ahead and give this some more width I'm playing with this by hand because I feel like the uh, It's kind of interesting. It's an interesting idea right there. And then, you know, for this, I can just turn this off because I don't need it. But say maybe I wanted to change to a different tail. Okay, so there we go. So visibility set one, visibility set two, and it just allows me to go through and, and kind of vary things up a little bit um, now that I've gotten rid of a whole bunch of stuff there <laughs> that should lighten up my file a little bit um, yeah and I do actually have it's a good point um, Quinn um, I'm going to keep that up art station Oh, you know what? Actually, in fact, if I went to flipped normals, they're having a summer sale right now, which is 
good to know. It's forty percent off sort of stuff. Okay. Um, in fact, let me grab. Remember me Though I have to travel far Remember me Okay, if you store So yeah, we got some stuff here uh, Let me grab Actually I have a special link if you're interested in checking this out. I have a special link that <laughs> benefits me better than, than regular links. Um, it's an affiliate link. So let me just kind of grab this and I'll send it your way if you're interested in checking it out. grief it doesn't want to copy the link there we go control copy yeah so I got a few things <clears throat> I've got this stylized character modeling for animation where I go through the process of creating clean um, clean meshes for animation um, I, it is a mermaid so there are no clothes but I do go through a chapter where I show how to like a couple different techniques of making clothing um, so really, really fun. I also talk about things like blend shapes. I talk about things like prepping for 3D print. Which if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen... <coughs> you'll have seen a copy of this mermaid already put together. Uh, or at least the little one anyway. Yeah, let's, uh, let's grab the... Let's go to the webcam view. Yeah, so you can see I, I started painting this one. I still need to get the hair printed. <laughs> but uh but yeah, all right, go through the process of you know showing how to cut and key, um, how to make sure that that uh that the that the that the mermaid is ready for um for printing. It's a uh, it's a super fun process, and it's it's so great to kind of see these things come together. I've I've started painting. You can see like I've got uh, my eyes kind of painted in. Um, <laughs> in fact, she has a little bit of rosiness to the cheeks, but it's hard to tell. I think I need to uh, amplify that a little bit more. But yeah, and then I've got like a like a like orange to the tail and a little bit of sheen, and then I kind of sanded it off in the other areas so that it feels uh, a little bit faded out. It has kind of like a, like a koi fish uh, splotchiness to it, kind of neat. But yeah, on Instagram, uh, if, you follow, if you follow on Instagram, you'll have seen pull it up so that I can show you. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, let me change my view so you guys can see. There's the uh, there's the mermaid, you know, the little one <clears throat> uh, that I went ahead and painted and uh, for, for my friend who designed her. Uh, so yeah, lots and lots of fun. As my first time painting a full figure, so super fun. So if you wanted to sell this to a company or show the prototype to a manufacturer, is that something you would ever pursue? For this, no. Uh, this is a this particular figure is one that I I wouldn't pursue making uh, like manufacturing because it's something that I um, that I made off of a friend's design. It's something that. Um, it's it's a lot of fun and a lot of people have asked, <laughs> but it's uh, it's definitely something that uh, um, that I I don't feel ready to pursue as like a 
as like a like a full manufactured piece <clears throat> but yeah she was so much fun really really liked working on that one uh, learned so much too <laughs> it's so crazy <laughs> <clears throat> back to Son of Fishbot. Back to Fishbot Jr. Alright. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, not control Q, control one, please. Uh, je def. I'm trying to like, this, this is a cool trick, by the way. <clears throat> really, really neat trick. You, you hold alt when you have your gizmo selected. You can click and drag, and that'll allow you to point your, your tool. Um, so for instance, right now, it's a little bit kind of off the axis, so I can just kind of rotate that a little bit, but it's amazing. It is such a useful trick. Just gonna go ahead and kind of amplify that. Fix this shape some. And I'm just gonna to try to kind of place it on there. Um, my goal with this piece is to help bring in that uh, mechanical aspect to the fins. And then I'll probably do with the fins, kind of like what I did with the, with the top fins and the back fins, um, where it's gonna have like a little segment or something like that to make it feel to make it feel, um, yeah, segmented. Yeah, because on the original fish bot, <clears throat> it had this just kind of like right down here, uh, kind of near the base. So I want to have that. And I want to keep these fins, you know, relatively small. One, because, you know, it's, you know, they don't, they don't need to be anything super crazy. Um, yeah, in fact, let's, let's go ahead and let's crease this guy right here. Let's say crease edge loop partial. And then, uh, let's come over here. Let's mess this part off. <coughs> and then let's try deformation. Oh, it disappeared. Inflate in negative direction. Let's see if we can get that's kind of interesting 
I'm trying to decide whether or not I like it. <laughs> I don't know that I like it. Which is fine. It's all about exploring. It's all about kind of figuring things out. And maybe it's a matter of uh, figuring it out to a point. And then, oh, you know what? I kind of, I kind of like the idea of, you know, let's use that alt move to kind of push that in a little bit. I kind of like this idea of getting something of like a, like a rail feeling kind of coming out of the end of this going into <laughs> cheap fins from Mario, <laughs> the cheap, cheap fins. Yeah. Kind of, kind of similar, kind of like that, uh, Just trying to keep something, make something simple, something that'll keep, uh, something that'll be producible. And so far that feels pretty good. Like size and everything, that, that feels, that feels pretty decent. Let's see if I can get my shape worked out. Yeah, some of these things just need to be kind of kind of finessed, massaged. It's fun working on this stuff. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll move this in. And I only need this to show up on the top. I don't need it to show up on the bottom because the bottom doesn't show up. <laughs> Um, so we're just going to kind of push this in, but I do need to make sure that it is out far enough that it'll read when it's at its, when it's at scale, right? <clears throat> so when it's about this size, I need to make sure that I can see it. And it feels like there are going to be some things that I need to kind of adjust and tweak, which is fine. It's just the name of the game. Okay, I got that going. I'm gonna to need to add in an extra loop in here. Let's go ahead and hide that, mask everything else. And then uh, I'll say inflate. Just because that's a that's like the quickest and easiest way to get to get stuff to <laughs> to move. Kind of pull that just to just where things go to. I really only want them to be kind of puffed in certain areas, I guess. Okay, so that's looking cool. I'm just gonna try to give it just a little bit more lip so that it's so that it's clearly visible. Okay. So that looks pretty good. It was really cool seeing all your trip pictures on Insta. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a good trip. It was a good trip. In fact, I went ahead and I um, I added the pictures to highlights on my on my profile. So in case anybody wanted to go through and kind of see kind 
guys see what it is that I was up to. I've got Germany and Norway, both right here. Uh, Norway's the the bulk of the trip. That's the, the whole reason I went out to Europe in the first place. Uh, to be able to do presentations and demo, demos and uh, network with uh, the students at the at the game school up there at Inlandet uh, Norway University. Uh, so super cool. And then Germany to be able to visit a friend and kind of sightsee a little bit. Um, yeah, just a little bit of fun there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a lot of bit of fun. I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of bit of fun. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna take this one. That way, it helps to preserve the form, and it doesn't like screw it up. I'm curious if I were to take that and make it so it feels like it's coming more from here. Does that work? Does that work? Let's get a little bit more roundness out the top. Definitely a very different feel, <laughs> a very different feel. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, swaying around in that chair. Yeah, I'm always like adjusting the way that I'm sitting. <laughs> um, I'm always, uh, so yeah, just, uh, just, it's just kind of interesting going through and kind of exploring these different, uh, these different pieces here. See if I can during my trip see me sway around in that chair. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. The little the little spin chair. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, those are super fun. And we and they have them here too. There's a. Uh, I don't see them as often. Well, I guess not as often. Yeah, no. I feel like I, I, I feel like I saw them more often in in Norway than I've seen them here in the states. Um, so, so the thing that that Quinn is uh, is referring to. Um, yeah, maybe I'll go through the the stories real quick if it lets me. gonna go um, boom oh yeah it's it's these right here you see I, they look like tops and you sit in them and you get to spin around <laughs> it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun my kids love them they're so great And then Pizza Nini. It's it's like a pizza store named after my wife. <laughs> but yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> I'm just a I'm just a kid, just a kid in a in a man's body. Let's go through and kind of clean this up a little bit. In fact, I wonder, let's do something like that. Maybe. You know, I kind of like the idea of bringing back some of that, uh, that sharper corner up at the top. So let's, let's play with this a little bit.
this is fun. <laughs> I just gotta clean up on the low poly stage so that way I can have nice clean edge flow. Or at least cleaner edge flow. I don't know that it'll be nice and clean edge flow, but it'll be cleaner. I have no idea what my kids are watching, but it's like some little characters are screaming and it's like, what? I'm not going to worry about cleaning it up perfect perfect but I do want it to be just you know good enough that it's that it's going to have the shape that I oh let's see actually cuz I just I just need to make sure that it feels here come on that it feels intentional that it feels controlled and that definitely feels much more controlled. Just try to puff it out a little bit more so that it feels a little bit more sturdy. Like one of the things I'm trying to figure uh, one of the things I want to be sure of is that this is going to be sturdy when it's uh, when it's cast I'm going to need to uh, create what's called sprues when I um, when I create these uh, all these different little parts you know so I'll probably have it you know I'll cast it upside down like this um, and then I'll have like, you know, like a vent going between the fins, probably, uh, possibly one going between here and here too, since th these are high points that, you know, I need to make sure I don't get bubbles. Um, and then I'll have a sprue going up from, or a vent rather, sorry, not a sprue, uh, a vent coming up from the fins. Um, and then I'll have, you know, like my 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 pouring sprue kind of coming up from here and then that'll come and get, it'll get cut off um as as it's after it's cast i'll have a vent here i'll have a vent at the fins um, and that'll help hopefully to make sure that i don't have any <laughs> any crazy bubbles um i might have to make some vents along here at the top of the uh the cushion underneath the chin so that i don't get bubbles there otherwise i mean this is this is coming this is coming so now that i have that i feel like that's going to work do you plug vents afterward i i i don't um i'm not i'm not like the most well versed with casting um it's something i'm still trying to get into but it's uh you know, my, my understanding is that vents don't get plugged, that they just kind of stay open. And then anything that kind of comes through, you just kind of trim it off. Because uh, there will always be something that comes through the vents, and that's fine. And I mean, the, the, the reason the vents are there is so that the vents um, allow for air to escape, so you don't get air bubbles, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the drain hole. I'm actually planning on on creating a drainage hole right here in the bottom, where I'll be having my sprue anyway, and then I'll have it at the size of you know some acrylic rod or something like that that I can actually just place in there. Um, when I'm when I'm casting, or when I'm molding rather. Um, so so that way it's you know it's just all all taken care of. Um. The other things like the like the vents I'll probably I'll probably uh, I will probably drill a little hole into maybe I won't drill it maybe I'll actually key it in 
um, but I'll put a I'll put a little hole into these pieces so that and it'll be at the at the size of uh, the vents that I want to use. Um, should work out. Should work out. I'm just gonna go ahead and merge my pieces down. <laughs> yeah yeah so not the drain holes yet it'd be the uh the the vents for for molding my name is nick Lajav. i'm sorry i don't i don't know how to pronounce uh ukrainian names former 3d artist now i'm a soldier thank you guys for the show last three months i'm trying to watch your streams as much as i can thank you I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry for everything that's going on for you guys over there. Um, that's a hard situation to be in. So thank you for your service to your country. Um, be safe. I hope that uh, I hope that there is as safe and quick and peaceful of a resolution as possible. Um, it's 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 hard seeing conflict. Um, it seems like it seems like that whole <laughs> that whole area is just always there's always so much that's going on uh, with you in Ukraine, um, everything going on in Palestine and Israel, and um, um, Armenia, so many other places over there, and I just. You know, I hope for I hope that you guys get quick and and peaceful resolution. So thank you again for your service to to your country and uh, I hope I hope you stay safe. Slavi Ukraini. It's always hard kind of thinking about those things. And I think beyond what makes it, you know, be, even just beyond the simple uh, um, fact that it's war and things are just hard and heavy with war I feel like there's not enough being done about the conflict in the world and I wish that I wish that things would get better because <laughs> there's not much that I can do and it's just hard to see people who can do and don't you know whatever for any studios the gaming industry movies uh, yeah so currently i'm working for marvel animation uh just started up this past week so that's really exciting um i am working on a currently unannounced project uh due to be hitting streaming 
sometime in the future. <laughs> and something I, I should probably find out is uh, when my project is actually slated to hit Disney Plus. But uh, yeah, they don't tell us these things. <laughs> It's like, hey, you're working on such and such show. Okay, great. But they don't tell me when it comes out and things like that. So <laughs> um, I have worked for other major studios. I was at Netflix before this. Um, I Before Netflix, I worked for Walt Disney Imagineering, designing things for the theme parks. Um, I did uh, DreamWorks animation before that. I worked at, I've done toys for Hasbro. I've done, gosh, what else have I done? I worked at Warner Brothers Games. Uh, I worked on the um, Hogwarts, Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy. I was like, gosh, what is that game called? <laughs> uh, and that was really exciting because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. <laughs> Um, yeah yeah so that's that's kind of that's kind of my bit of my history and currently I, I teach uh, classes at Noman School in Hollywood um, so yeah that's a lot of fun <laughs> Thank you so much. Which one is the best? Well, they're all best in, in like their own ways. Um, I've, I've, I feel the most excited about, um, well, like I love, I love the project I'm on right now. I'm, I'm really excited about how it's going and how it's, how it feels like it's going to go. Um, The, I really liked working on Hogwarts Legacy and, and, and I think that's a, it's just a, it's just a really neat moment for me in my own journey. Um, yeah, I think that should work. That should work. That should be good. Um, in fact, maybe I'll go ahead and, and, uh add vents in 3d that way it's just there and i know exactly how it's going to be and all that um maybe i will um yeah so i loved i loved working on that i thought it was awesome it was so so fun um Working for Netflix was kind of cool. Uh, they they pay super well, so that was awesome. Um, <laughs> but but then you know, working on something like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's a great story. It's something that you know most people on the planet have heard of and and watched or read or you know something at some point in their life. Um, I'm trying to think. little chubby fish butt oh my gosh oh I can't guys I just can't this is so adorable <laughs> um, let me see kind of zoom in and show a hero view here um, I don't remember if I saved or not it's, it's always better to be safe than sorry right um, it's something that I really appreciated actually about Netflix is how on top of things they were with, uh, you know, if I needed equipment, um, like for instance, I needed a new, I needed a new stylus to be able to work. They got that out to me the same day. Um, they got me all my computer equipment the first day, you know, there's different things really, really easy to, uh, 
to, to get what I need. Um, you know, exciting projects all over the place. So every every place has their has their strength. Um, but yeah, <laughs> what material is that? This is uh, it's one of the standard materials from ZBrush. It's this startup uh, or sorry, this basic material over here. Um, it's it's I, I set it to be my my go to my um, startup material because. You know, I just I just like it. It allows me to to see clean surfaces. Uh, it displays pretty clean, uh, pretty clearly when something isn't quite right. Um, there are other materials that I that I have used in the past, though. I mean, some people are really into the red wax. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> but whatever. Um, this uh, this basic material too is pretty good too. Because uh, you can see, like it, it gives you a little bit of a highlight, so it gives you that added definition. So in case there are any inconsistencies with the surface, you'll have that extra definition of uh, of what's there and what's not. Uh, so just add, go back to that startup material. Um, okay, let's go ahead and <laughs> you can see some things are still painted. That's funny. Let's say Z plugin. We'll say fill. We'll say color material. Okay. And this will go through and it'll fill every piece with this material and with that white color. Um, it just takes a minute. But yeah. Red whack material. <laughs> red whack. <laughs> Use that red whack. <laughs> there we go. So let me see. Let's 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 get those bolts on there. And then once we get those bolts on there, we'll call it a day, I think. Okay. So, yeah, let me go ahead and I'll load the brush. I should have it here. Fun a bot bolt. You see, it's just this uh, this simple little hexagon bolt sort of thing. Um, let me see, depth, good. Okay, that should be fine. Um, the thing that I want to make sure of is that this is creating, oh, first off, I need to make sure that dynamic is turned on for the draw size because my draw, my brush size is going to matter. Um, I'm going to say for the Z intensity, I'm going to change that to like 65, just so that it's not perfectly, uh... eh, no, let's keep it at 100. The thing that the Z intensity is going to change is like how deep that brush is. And I was thinking like if I draw it out at full depth, then you know maybe it'll be too much. It's definitely too large. I'm just going to draw that size down a little bit. Okay, let's say split unmasked. So we're just going to come down here. Let's actually rename this bolts. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and add in, oops, sorry, uh, just going to hold control after I start dragging it out. And that'll help it to snap to the brush size. I might actually leave the ones from the bottom off. But then again, adding them to the bottom could be a really good thing. 
because it would allow for um, it would allow for the base to kind of keep a little bit more stable maybe so it keeps from wobbling side to side So that'll keep it from wobbling side to side, but there's still a, a, a matter of it's going to kind of rock back because of how the weight is distributed here. Um, yeah, this will this will be printed. Um, so that'll be fun. I'm not entirely sure about these bottom these bottom bolts. I think it's just too much. Um, let's call that good so far as uh, so far as bolts actually go. Um, but I want to try something out. Let's go to layers. I'm going to add a layer. I don't want any color. Don't give me no stinking colors. Oh, nerds. Oh, well. Uh, deformation, and I'm going to say inflate. Okay, let's hit record. Okay, I don't like that. Okay, so we'll either just leave the bolts as they are, or, oh, hey, this is something that's a... Uh, I'm just going to kind of scoot these in just a little bit. Um, and the idea is to make sure that they read, but that they're not going to be um, leaping out from the shell too, too much. Um, because if they do, I, I worry that they just won't be attached properly. I need to make sure that they're completely penetrating so that way they are absolutely part of the mesh, you know, part of the, part of the piece. And that looks good. I think that works for me. Um, I'm going to try something out here real quick since uh, I kind of like it but I want it to be Mel's coming. Oh man, I actually work with Mel. Uh, Mel's on the same project I'm on. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I um, yeah, it's funny because like I I saw him in a in like a in, a in a chat room at work, and I was like, holy cow! I didn't know. <laughs> it was so cool. Here, let's go over to brush. I'm going to say embed. Let's tank this to like yeah, negative negative ten. Or and say negative five, something like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll take our Z intensity down to like sixty percent. Um so that way it's adding in the detail and not totally killing 
the look. Now, I have that as an option. In fact, let me uh, go ahead and do something like this. Or wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's starting to, to kind of chug along for some reason. Um, modified topology, delete hidden. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these other bolts here. I'm just going to try to copy more or less what it is that I have. something like that which you know that looks kind of cool that looks like that could work let me see yeah this is this this model is one that I actually started off stream um, mostly because I was like in between like waiting for uh, computer components for work. <laughs> yeah, kind of fun. Um, so yeah, I, I, I did this not streaming. Um, and then technically I did it using recycled parts from my fishbot model down here below. So there's, it, it's, yeah, there aren't going to be any recordings, um, Leo Filler, is this for work or personal project? It's for a personal project. Um, I, yeah, I, I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. I'll be going to, I have a booth at Lightbox this year, which is exciting. Let me show you kind of one of the things I'm working on. So like I've got my little baby shark here that I, um, that I intend to mold and cast and have fun with. Uh, so this is this is something that I'm working on uh, getting this fish pot going as well um, for the same same sort of thing you know being able to sell at uh, at Lightbox this year uh, I'm super excited <laughs> super excited um, but yeah so so that's the idea behind this it's all it's all about being able to make. Um, being able to make make these things so that they're <laughs> Fishbot Junior. <laughs> Fishbot is the Fishbot. Yeah, so being able to make toys that I can that I can sell and, and have fun with. Um Yeah, so that's that's the big goal behind that. Um I'm trying to think what else I was gonna say about that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the main idea. So, so it's, uh, yeah, personal. Yeah. Well, I think even a two part mold, uh, might be just fine too. Um, you know, getting like the, the part, the seam line kind of going up down along the bottom of the fins down on the side here and kind of down along the front and then down along the bottom lip and the top, the inside of the mouth, which is going to go at the top. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's something I gotta try to <laughs> play with and figure out, but it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, a three part mold could work too, where it's like maybe the, uh, the inside of the mouth is its own piece and, uh, it kind of like keys into the top part. That could be cool. Um, in fact, maybe I'll, maybe I'll see about doing something like that. Um, 
yeah, let's jump back over to this. So, trying to decide now between these bolts and these bolts. Because with these bolts, I can get more of the detail, you know, get more pieces on there. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Because that, that reads really well. That reads really well, and it's not distracting. Uh, the other ones, I feel like it's a, it might be a little bit too clunky. It might be a little bit too clunky. You know what? I'm going to do another version. Geometry, delete hidden. Let's get back to this, uh, the Fauna Bolt brush. In fact, let's do this. Brush, depth, let's embed to 20. Just to make sure that we're getting getting it in there nicely. Something like that, something like that, something like that. That's a little bit too close, I think. Something like that. Boom. It's like I like I like this size. Of a piece better. The tricky thing, I think I, I think I should just I think I should just stick with this piece right here. Uh, and the reason why is that this comes with all these little holes and that creates more opportunities for bubbles. Yeah, I think I think these ones will work best. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree, Eric. I agree. Yeah, I think we're going to stick with this then. So let's go. We'll turn this on. We'll delete the other two. Delete. Delete. I don't think I want this piece, so I'm just going to say delete. Uh, how many sub tools do I have? A lot. <laughs> Um, 29. Okay, let's go ahead and save this out. All right. Yeah, the smoother ones, the smaller ones, I think these definitely work better uh, for this particular version. I mean, I think since since this guy right here is designed more with like animation or VFX or games or something like that in mind, I think that these sorts of bolts with the with the with the hex um, with the hex attachment, I think that works. But uh, yeah, need to seam up top for the rivet to go in place. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're referring to there, Spear Chuck. Ungawa. That's a cool name. Um, need a seam up top for a rivet to go in place. Yeah, I think. I think the only thing that I uh, that I feel like I really need to do now is fill in this mouth properly so that it's not. So that it's not a molding hazard. <laughs> so let's do that. Um, let's go ahead and grab this. Now what I want to do is I want it to still feel like there's a mouth there, but I don't need it to feel like it's completely hollow and empty. Um, so I'm going to... I need more. I'm not sure what my son needs more of, but I'm guessing he's hungry. 
And you just kind of try to get like the full lip. something like that and then I feel like that works there's my little toy guys um, that's kind of fun Oh, rivets all along the perimeter? No, I just kind of want a, a couple there to make it feel like it's um, secured in place. Oh, I didn't even think about uh, adding in the rivets here. To make it so that this, this guy here is... secure <laughs> there we go <laughs> that's good enough <laughs> boom oh but I didn't want okay I like the placement so I'm going to keep it and turn off symmetry geometry delete hidden All right. Okay. I'm going to call that call that good. Check it out, guys. I made a thing. Okay, let's turn off the local symmetry. All right. I am going to say I'm going to show you guys real quickly how to do a turntable. Um, this is something that's insanely important uh, and really, really good to know. The first thing to, to be aware of is your floor and kind of where your center is, where it is that your thing is going to be rotating. Since it's going to be rotating like back here, I'd rather it rotate more from the middle. So let's, uh, let's go ahead to Z plugin. I'm going to say uh, Tipo's mesh and what this will allow me to do is move the whole thing <laughs> save <laughs> thank you um, move the whole thing so that it's you know so that it's in the center and since that's the the home space right there. I'm just going to kind of move that up some. Man, I might have to go through and, and make this something that I can uh, bring into my Oculus home too, because it's clean. It works really well. It's only 42,000. I would have to like decimate it because they're, and, you know, and get rid of any pieces that don't need to be there. Um, but yeah, I could totally take that and put that into the Oculus so that I could uh, see it in 3D, like in front of me. <laughs> Do I sculpt in perspective? Sometimes I turn it on and off, uh, basically, uh, depending on what it is I need to be able to see. If I need to see how things line up, I'll turn it off. Um, it's helpful to be able to, to turn it on and off. Uh, right now it's on. But yeah, so the floor, let's turn it off so that we can Yeah, there we go, that's pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do is figure out some kind of stand for this thing so that it can uh yeah, so that it can stand nicely and <laughs> not rock. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's going to be kind of, kind of an interesting challenge, but I, I'll figure it out. 
because uh, I do want it to stay oriented like this. Anyway, let's go ahead. Let's let's kick this back into into the regular file. Um, it looks like we forgot to have this piece move up with it. Where did it go? Where are you, Christmas? There we go, this piece right here. Something like that. There we go. So now you can see that's working. Um, that needs to be fixed. Here, we'll turn this off because we don't need it. We don't need the light booleans turned on. We do, however, need to turn this off. Delete the tail fins that we're not using. We'll get rid of the dorsal fin piece that we're not using. What other pieces can I get rid of? Okay, looks like we've got everything gotten rid of that we need to. Okay, so now I just need to fix these vent grates here. Make sure that has symmetry turned on, and it does. Gonna move it in just a little bit so that we have that full penetration there. Okay. Okay, I think that this is what's making it so that I can't have <laughs> we're just gonna move it up into the center of the fish bot. Alright. Now I'll save. Replace it. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So now that we've gone through all that trouble of uh, setting the fish bot right in the center of the world and kind of making it so that it fits. Um, making it so that it, what am I trying to say? Um, yeah, so that it's so that it's located where we want to in the scene. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and position it in my screen in a way that, you know, makes sense. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna do a couple different things. I'm gonna come up to movie. I'm gonna turn on timeline, let's hit show. And we'll just make a little mark there so that we can get back to this particular spot in our in our turntable. What I'm going to do, okay, movie. Let's go ahead and dock it over here to the side so we can get to it easily. The first thing I do, always, 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 is make sure that dock and large are my selections for size. If I'm trying to do just like little tests, I'll do you know different. <laughs> I'll I'll try with a different uh, different scale, but not with a different. Uh, uh, you know, full window recording versus document recording only. The document's going to only go to your workspace, which is nice, okay? Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to title image, okay? Remember, this is all underneath movie, okay? I'm going to say fade out, fade in, take that to zero. Otherwise, it's going to fade to the ZBrush logo or from the ZBrush logo at the beginning and at the end of the video, and I don't like that, so take that the overlay image 0% opacity uh, modifiers you can change your spin frames to something you know whatever you'd like I like 300 uh, just gives me a good 10 second turntable which is nice and then I can you know speed that up if I need to um, uh, what else
else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, the other thing I try to make sure of is that is that it feels like my object is going to be centralized in the place where I want it. So right now I want it to kind of spin over here off off to the off to the side. Um, otherwise, I try to center it so that yeah, let me show you. Um, let me show you. Uh, control T. So you can see this is the axis that it's spinning on. If I wanted it to, if I was if I was prepping this turntable for my portfolio, I would center that right over these arrows down here at the bottom. That's the center of your screen. That's the center of your document, your workspace. So that's great. Control T. Uh, I can come up and then I can say you know turntable and I'll, I'll just go ahead and bookmark that. So we have that bookmark too. Um, I'm going to do it from over here for right now, and hopefully this works well. Uh, we'll just say turntable. Okay. If you can see it in all of its glorious fish bot glory. <laughs> fish bought and paid for. Mm, I'm trying to decide with the uh, with the eyes with the irises how it's got like those lens irises um, I'm trying to decide if I want to kind of round out those edges more um, but yeah so there's there's the turntable now what you do is you come up and you hit the H still underneath movie right so there's still underneath movie and then you can say export okay and this is where it's going to say you know Fish bot, uh, chippy, turn oh one. That's a long name, but it's you know it's a name. So then you can see it's going through. It has the uh, anything that's in your document space, including screenshots. It's going to remember that. So yeah, keep that in mind. It doesn't keep your spotlight. That's a that's just a little thing to be aware of. Uh, so if I want to have this image in that turntable. I'm just going to have to composite it later. Not a big deal. Um, use After Effects or Premiere or anything, you know, whatever whatever program it is that you use that use that allows you to use uh, different layers. You totally do that. Uh, you could even use, there's this uh, app for your phone called InShot. Let me see. You can, in fact, let me, let me get back to the webcam view. Uh, you can see it right here. Okay, in shot. Oops. Oh, it's hard to see and it's all blown out. Yeah, anyway, it's great. It allows oh you can see it a little bit better that way. <laughs> I'll just I'll show I'll show off to that side over there. Um so yeah, you can go in, you can do all sorts of different things. You can edit photos, you can edit video and things like that. Um, there's a free version that has a watermark, but there's also the uh, uh, the paid version that allows you to do a little bit more. Um, so yeah, and that's 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 an option for you, and, and now that's all exported. Um, the tricky thing about it is that it's now a an MPG file. Let's get into the Chibi folder here. Uh, it's it's now a an MPG file, which is fine. I mean, it it works, but it doesn't work if you wanted to put it onto Instagram. So to be able to put that onto Instagram, I always have to come in. Uh, I need to, I need the Adobe Media Encoder, um, and I just use their presets. Uh, these presets come with the encoder. It's awesome. So I'm going to. Go back to my screen view here. We'll wait for encoder to, to pop up and then I'll show you what it is that I do uh, to be able to get this to work. Because uh, if you wanted to be able to take it over onto, for instance, your iPhone or put it on Instagram, you need an MP4. Um, you see, you can see like, like this right here, I have this MP4 built out already. I'm just gonna delete it. Delete. Okay, so this is our queue. Okay, this is important to, to recognize that you know the queue is where you stack up whatever videos you want to encode. So I'm just going to grab 
my video, drag it over into that queue. Just really, really simple. And if it wants to uh, play nicely, I'll, uh... <laughs> there it goes. Okay. So you can see right here, it already has my preset in place. Uh, but if you wanted to be able to find it, you can just come in, you just click on, it's it's not going to play super nicely and it's not going to let me encode it while I'm streaming because it's just going to chug along. Uh, these, Ado these Adobe products are very graphics intensive and so it's, uh, you know, so is, so is the streaming. So the streaming plus the graphics of the, of the Adobe, uh, they, 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 they're competing for resources. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what we get. Uh, these presets are right here. And if you scroll down, you see all these different ones. I like to go down to the YouTube ones. And then the other thing that I'll do is I'll say match source because that'll make sure that, you know, if the dimensions are different of the video, I don't lose anything that's that, you know, that I've intentionally created for myself. Um, so, yeah, once I once I hit that, it will go through and it'll crop down to the source of the video and you'll see the numbers for the width and the height change to match the uh, the output from ZBrush. Um, There you go, you see it's match source, and now you can see it's changed to 1552 by 940. Hit OK. Okay. And then this is essentially ready to go. You can you can choose where it is you're going to, to save it out to if you wanted to save it to a different place. This is just going to save it to the place wherever you dragged the original source video from. You can see the encoder over here, H264. It's great. Okay. And then well, let's see if it'll let's see if it'll render. But uh, yeah, uh, you go ahead and you hit that play button and, and it'll render it out. It's a pretty simple, pretty simple little thing. Works really, really well. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then that just makes it so that it's usable for for Instagram or for ArtStation or for other, um, yeah, it's a converter. It's a it's an encoder, a converter. Yeah, yep. Good question. Um, yeah, it's just the standard one that comes from Adobe. I don't know if it'll actually go or do anything uh, while I'm streaming, but. Uh, Oh, hey, look, it started. I mean, it's just a 10 second animation. It's not something that's super heavy. It's not a big video. <laughs> I mean, it's taken over a minute to do a couple of seconds, but really it goes quite quickly when it's when I'm not streaming because it's trying to compete for resources. I think it's uh, chugging. It's making the stream chug. That's kind of funny. see if I can stop it I think it stopped. Okay. I'll just close it. Okay. Am I back to Okay. Yep, I can move. I can move now. <laughs> Task manager. 
Let's see if it'll finish closing out. There we go. There we go. That's better. Now I feel better. <laughs> Now I have my uh, my menu bar down at the bottom there. Interesting, but yeah. So that's that's that. And that's how you do turntables, and that's how you uh, have fun and make baby robotic fish in ZBrush. <laughs> Super fun. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed kind of putting this together. Um, my next steps will be taking it and. Yeah, making it one solid object and 3D printing it, prepping it for 3D print. Um, so yeah, um, dude, <laughs> thanks so much for coming and hanging out. In fact, let me let me check and see. Just for the sake of. Just for the sake of stuff. I'm going to want... Everything... Into a new folder. Come on, that's not what I asked for. Okay, let's grab that new folder. Yes. Okay, there we go. Now I need to check to make sure that live booleans are working as they should. Looks like it's good. So I, I want to check and make sure with that specific piece that's cutting this guy right here. Yeah, okay. So it looks like that's doing a good job then. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that screenshot of the fish bot. And what I'm gonna do is real quick, I just gotta double check. It's like I've always gotta double check just to make sure that everything looks ready to go. Okay, let's do this little test, uh, little test Boolean right here. Let's go ahead and say, uh, Boolean with dynamic subdiv. It should only take a minute here, not too long. <laughs> Teach us how to DJ with turntables. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No. And there we go. So there's the fish bot all Boolean together. Um. And then there, there are a lot of different things that you can do with this too. Like if you wanted to, you could go ahead and cut it into different pieces really, really easily because you know, hey, look, everything's already cut apart there, you know? Um, yeah, lots of, lots of cool things that you can do with that. Um, let me see. Do you have a personal channel? I do have a personal channel. You can find me pretty much anywhere underneath Smartest. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find. Um, HTTPS colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash Smartest and https colon slash slash <laughs> www.twitch.tv slash smartest 
or https colon slash slash <laughs> www.smartest.com so those are kind of like my um, you can also find me at instagram dot com slash smartest um, yeah and that, those are kind of like those are the main places to, to find me at um, Instagram's the place where I'm the most active I haven't streamed a whole lot in a little while um, that bottom cut let me see that bottom cut below the fin, I'm guessing you checked that. It's kind of deep. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out where exactly you're referring to. Um, you're talking about this right here? Yeah, and I, I suspect that'll stay pretty uh pretty deep. My intent is to have like a two part mold that's, you know, side to side. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Let's see kind of how this goes. Um, just the way I, it's just kind of a pull apart mold on the side. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you might be referring to. You talking about this right here? Yeah, it's certainly a bit more um a bit more open there. I might close it up and then just re reperform the boolean. We'll just see. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to check out the inside. So let's just flip it so that it's reversed. I'm going to do this. Control Shift A. Yeah. So it still it still has like an opening on the inside. Um, Which you know it might be okay. You see all these like extra floating bits here. I want to get rid of those. Let's say flip. We'll come up here underneath geometry, modify topology, uh, delete hidden. So now those are gone. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm looking at it kind of more from like that the scale that it'll be at, I don't think it'll make enough of a difference to, to really matter. Um, I'll have to do a test print to see, but uh, no, I think that's a, that's a valid, it's a valid question. It's a valid concern. Um, I gotta do a little test real quick just to be able to see All right, let's grab our piece here. Move it down to the bottom, turn on the negatives. Okay, so this will help me to see kind of what my thicknesses are like going all the way through. So you can see that like, it's it's pretty solid down here in this section, which is good. That can work for me. And that can help possibly like keep it balanced. Yeah, and that should work. Uh, all I need to do now is here we'll just say uh, 
call that cross section. Turn it off too, so that way I can turn off my live booleans and be okay. Um, uh, the thing that I'm going to want to do is instead of just having it like this, I'm going to want to add that vent in the middle. Uh, so now, kind of like what you're talking about, Kirkland, um, maybe what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll add in that vent, and then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll fix that little gap right there, because that is, that is a bit much, um, just to keep it more consistent with what we have. Where's the top shell right there? That should be a bit better. And this one back here, it feels like that's not lining up quite right. I'm going to grab, grab that, kind of pull it out some. And that should be good. Okay, let's try this again. Let's say... some reason I started moving things and I didn't want to move things <laughs> okay let's say insert we'll say cylinder we'll just shrink it down in one direction So something like that should be pretty good. Let's just make sure that it's in a good spot to be able to make a proper vent for printing. And then it looks like that should be good. Let's turn that to negative. Turn off the frame, turn that on. What is this? Okay, I see what that is. Okay, let's turn off perspective because I don't need it on at the moment. I'm just gonna kind of move this out of the way. Just so that it's not creating problems on the inside, right? Okay. All right. In fact, one of the things that I'm considering Say Control Shift D. Just going to make these all duplicates. Merge. 
Surge down. Merge down. And then let's try just uh, giving this like one little unit of inflation. And see if that cuts any of our issues here. Save because that's how we do. <laughs> oh, thanks, Spear Chuck. <laughs> Yeah, I I quite like my Letterman jacket. I I've worn it maybe twice. <laughs> like I don't want to ruin it. It's one of those that's that's probably the coolest crew gift I've ever been given. Um, it's, it was a really a really uh, nice and exciting gift to receive. Okay, so now we got the live boolean on. We've got that going in. Okay, let's try this out. Let's try this out, okay. Boolean with dynamic subdiv. Give it a minute to think. Oh, I forgot to fix the eyes. Let's go ahead and just kind of check this. Come on, you. There you go. Yeah, you can see like places where things are a little bit messy or whatever. Let's uh, let's come up in over here and we'll just say smooth oh here we got to change our smooth intensity up to 100 make sure symmetry is on and we'll just smooth it out it's not something that's a huge deal um, but it'll save us a little bit of material and we don't want any overhangs anyway, so it's kind of funny to see it in this sort of way. It almost looks like a like a really cool little uh, transport or something. I don't know. <laughs> now it's more like an ale mug. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Not too shabby. And then that's all good and ready to go. I do want to check Leonard. How you doing, dude? Yeah, no, I, I'm, uh, so yeah, I'm streaming today. I, I wasn't put onto the schedule for some reason. So, yeah, the prepping for printing is the fun part. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just, a just a matter of kind of trying to figure out why I'm, uh, not quite making it into the schedule. What is it I was wanting to fix? I was wanting to change the neck piece. Uh, let's kind of smooth that out a little bit. Got that. 
what was the other thing? I, oh, the eyes, the iris part. That's what I wanted to do. There we go. Let's see if we can actually just polish it. Let's turn off the live Boolean. We'll turn off the things here at the bottom. Turn off solo. A ver. Turn on the folder. Okay, I like that, but let's push it a little bit further, I think. Now it feels a little bit too doughy. I think maybe doing it once is probably the, uh, is probably <laughs> the best bet. <laughs> Thanks, Leonard. Yeah, it's it's super fun. I'm totally like, I'm totally like, cheap cutting the hollowing stage, and <laughs> I got some I got some work done for free on that. So you know, just the way that things got hollowed out was pretty simple. Um, I'm gonna take these. Let's delete, delete. We'll say. Boolean with dynamic subdiv. Bring that out. Yeah, I'm totally shortcutting some things and just using whatever comes for free with uh, with the way that I modeled it together. Um, but you know, it's fun. It's fair. Uh, Control Shift A. See all of our little floating bits that we're getting rid of. Uh, geometry, delete hidden, and yeah, let's let's check just to make sure that we're solid. Turn on our live boolean. Oh, that's not what I wanted to move. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> uh, that's that might create some issues here, actually. You see how it's like I've got these uh, these hollow gaps over here in the head. Um, there's going to be like too much. Um, like this is going to create like suction cups, and it could create some issues with the print. So what I need to do is I need to add in a piece that's going to allow me to hollow that out. So I'm going to say append sphere, because why not? And I'm just going to kind of place this So now what I can do is I'm going to use my clip curve. Oops, other side. So that way it's not clipping out the bottom. Oops, turn on symmetry so that we're getting the same move on both sides. Try to extend that out into the I'll say the main cabin of the fish. <laughs> I 
So this is the inside. So I don't, I'm not terribly worried about what it looks like. I'm just worried about making sure that I am preserving thicknesses and making sure that I, you know, that it's that it's safe. That I'm not going to totally kill my uh, my object. Okay, it's all about having it solid. Uh, it's all about having it hollow. It's all about you know making sure that this works. up a little bit okay just trying to stay aware of what's going on on the inside let's go ahead and let's raise this a little bit higher So this uh, this area here toward the front of the head, I want to I want to essentially get rid of this section of the uh, of the uh, what's it called of the eyes. So that way it's not creating this suction cupped area. Hopefully that makes sense. When I'm when I'm saying suction cupped area, like I, I I'm referring to areas that you know create cupping. How large am I going to print this? Um, I'll 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 tell you about the the floating bits in a second once we get a new uh, once we get a new boolean generated. Um, printing it size wise. Probably a couple different sizes. I'll probably do one. In fact, let me pull this up so that it's webcam view. Um, I've got my shark, so I'll do one. I'll do one about this size, and then I'll do one about twice the size. Um, so yeah, these are these are kind of these are toys that I'm prototyping for myself for Lightbox at the end of the year in October. Um, so yeah. I'll have these. Uh, I'll have these for sale at my booth. Um, I actually have a booth this year, guys. It's exciting. Um, so that's that's why I'm going through. Sorry, I just like totally hit the microphone. Hopefully, that didn't hurt your ears. Um, yeah, that's what I'm working on this for. Is for for Lightbox. So it's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to it and it, just having a ton of fun. Um, which is definitely the name of the game for me. It's all about having fun. I want to kind of see where that goes to. this out as much as I can without ruining it, right? So you want to be really careful that I don't get too far over because you see this is already super thin right here. So I'll probably leave that about where it's at. give that another subdivision level just so that I can have a little bit extra shaping power <laughs> okay 
I'm going to check my cross section again just to make sure that I'm it's getting like insanely thin right here in places so we're going to want to not go chasing that too too much That's a little bit thin right here. pushing it too far now. Nope, that's good. Okay, let's keep moving up. I think the rest of it should be good. Ooh, this is a spot that I want to kind of tweak. Okay, because you can see uh, this is actually creating a hole. Okay, and that, that could be problematic. Um. <laughs> Is it is it is it uh, your prototyping for your ATAT -AT walker? Because that was looking pretty cool the last I saw it on. Uh, last I saw it on. What's it called on ZBrush Central? Take this. And I'm just going to gently move this down. Maybe move it back just a little bit right there, just trying to. Okay, let's turn these guys off for right now. Uh, this this should be good to add in here now, though. So I'm just going to control up arrow a couple times here until it's in the bottom of, of this object here. And let's turn this on. Turn that, turn the wireframe off there. I use a pen tablet. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Added a couple of things to my to my desk lately, so let me see. Let's change this to webcam view. Yeah, so there is ah, nerds. I'll just turn it down. It's easier. Yeah, just my Wacom tablet. Uh, Really simple. For work, I use a Cintiq, um, which is nice. Um, 
but I can't afford a Cintiq for myself, so <laughs> so so I just have a I have a pretty simple setup. Um, a lot of my friends have like the really cool big computers and everything, and you know someday I'll have that too. But for now, this works. All right, let's see. I'm gonna grab this. I'm going to say delete. Uh, Boolean with dynamic subdiv. Oh boy, guys. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, let's just run through this and check it. It looks like we fixed that. Just to make sure that there's always a connection here between the head and the body. Yeah, the the pen and tablet, it, it works. It's what I've been using since school, so, you know, it works. <laughs> yes. All right. So now that we have this in place, not sure what that is oh it looks like it's just the bottom of the fin okay I see Okay. See what I want. What I'm trying to check with this is I'm trying to check and see. Yeah, here we go. This is what I wanted. Ooh, but I also want to see kind of what's creating that backside here. I guess that's all of that. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go ahead and mask that. We'll mask this. And then all of this, I can just go with my clip curve. And just kind of clip it up. And then we'll smooth it so that it's a little bit nicer. Uh, that way we just don't have like those pieces dangling down and in because the more pieces that we have dangling on the inside, the more supports we'll need on the inside. Uh, which just uses material. Um, I want to be very specific about where I put my my supports on the inside so that way I can get the support I need so that the model turns out strong and that I don't have to worry about um, I don't have to worry about excessive you know loss of materials because of that. Okay, so to be able to go back to that question, yeah, I should probably run a slice from front back, front to back too, just to check it. Um, go ahead and turn this one into. Turn off that main one. Just 
just turn off symmetry. I don't need symmetry on. F, turn that off, okay. It's kind of funny to see from this view. And you can see kind of like these little pockets kind of coming in. Ooh, like that one right there. Here, let's 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 do this first. Cause like I was talking about uh, getting rid of, um, getting rid of the floating bits. So you can see this uh, this particular little little floating bit here, right here in the middle. It looks kind of like a little smiley face. Um, that's that's a floating bit. That's something that's that's going to be uh, gotten rid of. And oops, I don't want that. I want select lasso. Let's go ahead and select a bit of that. Control shift A. Okay. If we invert it, you can see that's that piece right there. That's what we're seeing. So we can get rid of that. So we just invert our, our visibility. We go down here. We can say delete hidden. And then we'll come down and we'll continue our. You can see that got rid of our little. A little smiley bit okay I mean there's still a little bit of like like I don't particularly care for the way that um, that that cavity is going into the head like that uh, but it's in fact I was pretty sure I had gotten rid of that did I not get rid of that gonna make this like another set uh, control F boolean 2 because you know just to keep things straight um, let's see cross section I want that one visible instead That's probably because it's not inside of the folder there. So I'm curious why I got such a Just trying to make sure that I'm understanding exactly what's going on with this because I feel like I feel like this should have carved out more yeah you see that okay I'm going to turn that on and we're just going to run booleans with dynamic subdivs Uh, same thing. We're going to come over here. Let's double check just to make sure that we don't have any floating bits. You see, we got a little bit of a one there. So we're going to say geometry, delete hidden. It's all just process. So it's it's. Yeah, sorry if this is like. Uh, <laughs> less fun to watch but it's uh it's important just to kind of check and double check and recheck and hip check and <laughs> another thing i can do is i can just kind of make parts visible or invisible or whatever visible
Okay. See, that looks much more the way that I was expecting it to look the first time. <laughs> so we'll call that good. We'll call that good. Let's save this. Do you want to replace it? Of course I do. Son of fish bot. <laughs> we'll just call it that. Um, now that I have this, I want to go through and kind of check my scale because scale is important. Um, I'm going to, let's see. Let me see. I mean, I don't have, do I have a ruler? Do I have a scale thing that I, like a scale check that I could bring in? And the other thing I want to check on too is what scale I'm actually wanting to export as. So, and I, I'm, I'm not really being too particular, but this is about 70, it's about 70, 75 millimeters. I'll say 75 millimeters. I like 75, that'll work. How are you doing? Um, so 75. So what I'm going to do is I am going to say, let's close that. We can close this too. It's not really a big deal. Or I guess what we can do is we can book this over here. Um, I am going to say clone. And we're just going to come over to just this fish bot. Let's go ahead and save it so that it's saved. Um, and then we'll say scale master. We'll say sliders to sub tool size. You can see it like really, really small, right? So what we want to do is I want it to be 75 centimeters to the top. Or it's not, not centimeters, sorry, 75 millimeters. So 75, okay. So now if we take this over into here, <laughs> well, you can already see like huge scale difference. Okay. So if we were to come up here to our 3D print hub, we could say update size ratios. Uh, you can see 75 millimeters, that's what I want. So it changed it over to millimeters and it changed it to, to the right scale here. And I can go ahead and I can print it out. Fishbot Junior. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what we actually do. Uh, yeah, Junior could work. Junior could work. So yeah, we've got our scale in there now, and we can say export to STL. We'll say underscore 75 millimeters, just so we know that that's how big it is. So we don't have to worry about getting confused or lost. And if we need a, a scale check for anything, we, we have that and it's ready. Um, oops. Lovely view of his rump. Okay, so yeah, now we've got that. Let's turn on perspective so that we can see him in all his glory. Um, we can then go ahead if we wanted to. Uh, this other one, I don't think it's quite half the size. I think it's a little bit more than half. Yeah, it's 50. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to say 50. And 
export to STL. Fifty millimeters, save, and there we go. Wow, what did it just do? I don't know why it did that just now. That is so weird. I don't know why it's creating all these all those screenshots. But yeah, there we go. You know, there's there's our new fish bot, and we are. We're ready good and ready to go so I'll probably go ahead and uh, print this little guy out I'll print both sizes at the same time and then I'll post pictures of it on my uh, on my Instagram uh, so you know be sure if you're if you're not already following me there um, Yeah, it'll be printed in resin uh, on on my form pr uh, form two printer. Um, so yeah, be sure to be sure to follow there, and I'll I'll post updates when it's when it's done printing, and yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully, well, <laughs> we've already gone through. Yeah, yeah wash hands. <laughs> um, we've already gone through and and done a bunch of. A uh, bunch of prep work here, throwing it into the slicer uh, for for form labs. You know, Preform is 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 a really decent slicer and does a ton of the cleanup uh, kind of automatically, just so that it's ready for the form labs printers. Um, in fact, I might have to plug this in real quick. Let me see. Plugged for the last month or so, so we'll have to see if if it needs any. Uh... Yeah, I don't I don't have any uh, any keys or joints, so yeah, I don't I don't have to worry about about those. It's just a a single piece. It's hollow, so it should be fine. Um. See if we can connect to my printer. I'll need to change the software a little bit so it's kind of. Uh... should have my printer in here but I don't know why it's not uh... yeah color v1 it's yeah let's go ahead and we'll add in the uh, add in the pieces to set the scale of what you want your object to be before adding them right yes uh, yes that's why I, w I went ahead and uh, let's say repair um, yeah that's why I went ahead and made sure that I got my scale right inside a ZBrush before uh, well you know as I exported 
Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, technically, the uh, the model itself is seventy five millimeters. Um. If we update our size ratios, you'll see it'll get us to the 75 millimeters here. I don't know why it's uh, screenshotting like that. That's really bizarre. But yeah, so it's it's that's the size that it's at. So it's kind of nice. Um, but then here, so you can see like there there are these uh, cups that it's it's creating you see cup detected um, essentially what that's saying is that that's creating like a suction cup sort of effect where it could pull the print off of the bed um, I didn't want to um, have it oriented like that anyway so I have it oriented something more like that with the vent hole on the bottom um, and you can see like these are the unsupported areas on the model, which is fine. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so currently, the resin that I have in is the uh, Formlabs color kit. Okay. Okay. So the color kit's great. Um, I used it actually to be able to print my mermaid. And uh, yeah, you can see, here we go. And the color's not turning out great because of the, the window light <laughs> and all of that. But, it's, uh, but it, it came out with this nice flesh tone uh, because I was able to mix, to mix pigments to get that great skin tone sort of color. Um, and then I can just paint over the top of it and it's, and it's beautiful, it's, it's wonderful. Um, But yeah, so that's 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 kind of what that's what this is going to be printing out in is that type of material. Uh, it sands really well. I really quite like the material, and so I'm going to I'm going to use that to be able to generate my uh, my prototypes here. Um, let's grab the supports. I don't need a full raft. I'm just going to use mini rafts. Um, we'll say, yeah, we'll leave the density. It's fine. Um, height above the raft. I always change this to three millimeters. <laughs> uh, raft thickness. I'm going to change this to 1.25 or something like that. Because I feel like the default of 0.75 is just not quite enough. It's like, it's like too thin. Um, really kind of screws things up a little bit so yeah let's just and auto generate that and that'll take a minute but but yeah really that's that's kind of the gist of everything um, it's been a much longer stream than than I've done recently so hopefully you guys don't mind but I've had fun um, like I said I'll go through and I'll send these to print and once they're done, sorry, it's slowing down a little bit. Must be graphics card intensive to Now we've got that. If we wanted to, we could come in here and we can kind of check, um, you know, what it looks like on the inside, how it's how it, how it'll print out. 
Okay, I don't feel like I need to worry too, too much about what I have here. This looks great. Um, one thing that I do want to worry about is I want to create like a like a really kind of hefty um, support kind of right in the middle. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. We'll leave it. I'll just I'll make my own sprues and things like that. Uh, the vents and everything when I'm when I'm getting ready to cast, it'll be fine. We'll leave it. We'll leave it, and then. Yeah, gosh, that should be that should be everything. Let's I'll I'll go ahead and send this to print and follow up with me on uh, on Instagram if you're interested in being able to see these guys and how they turn out. It'll take approximately eleven and a half hours, which means it'll take all the rest of the day to 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 print it out. Uh, but it'll be cool it'll be really neat so yeah there we go hope you guys uh enjoyed the stream i had fun uh yeah i'll see you next time i see you thanks for stopping by stay safe have fun have a great day and i'll see you around smartest out